We continue in a very stormy pattern across central and eastern Kentucky. The severe weather threat continues into the overnight. Details are coming up. Governor Bevin announcing his plans for Medicaid, what it means for thousands of Kentuckians. And how a Kentucky native is reaching out to the families and survivors of the Orlando nightclub shooting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening and welcome to WKYT. Our first alert severe weather day continues tonight as we are tracking another round of showers and thunderstorms trying to move into the bluegrass. These storms could bring some damaging winds as well. Let's begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey with an early look at the forecast. Coming at us in waves again later tonight and again tomorrow afternoon. That's going to be the prime times that we are looking at for the possibility of some damaging winds. Out ahead of the uh, severe weather threat coming later tonight, we have some isolated showers trying to go up into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Overall, over the next, let's say, two, three, four hours, not really concerned about a whole lot in terms of severe weather. That'll change later tonight as we're watching thunderstorms now trying to pop north of Indianapolis toward the Chicagoland area. And what will happen over the next few hours, you're going to see more thunderstorms begin to fill in here to the west of Chicago, toward uh, Champaign, into parts of Iowa, maybe southern Wisconsin. And that will form a big cluster of thunderstorms that will then die from northwest to southeast across the Ohio Valley and in toward the Appalachian Mountains later tonight and tomorrow morning. Odds right now favor something called a derecho that will fire up later tonight. That may be a big complex of thunderstorms that produces damaging winds over several hundred miles, almost continuously. We typically can get those across the Ohio Valley in the summer months, especially. Haven't had one so far this year, but this is a pattern that is ripe for that, especially as hotter air tries to surge in from the southwest. Tomorrow afternoon, we get another round of some strong or severe thunderstorms. And with later tonight's stuff and tomorrow's stuff, high winds, the main threat, and some local flooding, that will be a possibility as well. We'll check on a future radar picture for the next 12 hours when I come back in a few. A state of emergency has been called in Harlan County as crews are out trying to clean up damage from last night's heavy rain and severe flooding. Several roads and bridges are completely washed out. Crews say it could be a week before repairs are done. Hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians could see major changes to their health insurance. This morning, Governor Matt Bevin announced he submitted a waiver to change how Medicaid works in Kentucky. And if the plan is not approved, the governor says those under the current Medicaid expansion could lose their insurance. WKYT's Mark Barber has more in our top story at 5:30. If Medicaid officials approve Governor Matt Bevin's proposal to overhaul Medicaid, then people will have to start paying monthly premiums. They will also lose their vision and dental benefits. However, if Medicaid officials do not approve the plan, then Bevin says the 400,000 Kentuckians who are covered under the expansion of Medicaid could lose their insurance. The Commonwealth's expansion of Medicaid is now going to lie in the hands of CMS. If the governor's plan is approved, it would take the place of Kentucky's Medicaid expansion. Bevin wants to scrap the expansion because he says it's costing taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars to cover the costs for hundreds of thousands of people. If Medicaid officials sign off on Bevin's proposal, the new plan would only apply to adults who are healthy and able to work. For people both all the way from 34 percent of poverty up to 138 percent of poverty, there will be premiums ranging between a dollar up to $15. While people would lose their dental and vision benefits, they could buy them back through a rewards program. Simply by taking a health risk assessment or participating in volunteer work, they'll be able to get uh, credit. So what do you think about this proposal? State officials want to know, and you now have 30 days to comment on their proposal. If Medicaid officials approve it, then Bevin expects it will roll out statewide on September 30th. In Frankfurt, Mark Barber. WKYT. If the proposal passes, people who qualify for Medicaid would receive the same health coverage as state employees. Now, if you want to leave a comment for the governor, you can find directions on how to do so on our website, WKYT.com. 
A central Kentucky man accused of shooting a man from a car appeared in court today. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Madison County. Police say 18-year-old Jimmy Skinner admitted to shooting Sammy Isaacs from a car along Turpin Drive late Sunday night. They say Skinner's girlfriend and the couple's baby were also in the car at the time. Today in court, Skinner pled not guilty to charges of wanton endangerment and attempted murder. A preliminary hearing has been set for June 29th. Police say Isaacs is in critical condition and relying on a ventilator to breathe. They say he was shot in one of his lungs. In Anderson County, a man facing a misdemeanor charge for animal cruelty cannot be charged with a felony. According to the Anderson News, 39-year-old Howard Tinnell pled not guilty to the, in court in a hearing last Thursday. Tinnell was arrested when his dog was discovered dead by police. They say the dog had been tied up for weeks without food or water. The prosecutor for the case said that while an autopsy revealed the dog starved to death, it did not rise to the level of torture required in Kentucky to bring a felony charge. Tributes and memorials continue to pour in for victims of the mass shooting at Pulse nightclub in Orlando. 49 people were killed, 53 were injured. Today, Hillary Thornton spoke with a Kentucky mass shooting survivor who has a special message for the victims inside the nightclub the night of the shooting. I was a freshman in high school. It was December 1st, 1997, and I was in a prayer group that morning when the shooting happened. Brittany Thomas remembers that morning well. She was in the room as a 14-year-old student opened fire, killing three people, injuring several others, Thomas losing one of her best friends and now living with the, at times, difficult emotions of being a survivor. Whenever you go through something like that, initially you just feel that no one else could possibly understand what you're going through. And that is where the idea for the Rebels Project came from, bringing those together who experience similar trauma through the power of social media. A lot of people from Columbine, from the Aurora Movie Theater, from San Bernardino, um, from the attacks at the Bataclan in Paris. And that is why Thomas, along with survivors from around the world, coming together to make this video in hopes of getting a message to the survivors in Orlando. Dear survivor, you may not feel like a survivor yet, but in time, you will. Our shootings and circumstances are very, very different, but they often lead to a lot of the same places. Even more sad because it's just becoming more commonplace. It's almost like people expect it. All knowing firsthand, it takes time and space. If they want to, we're willing to, to take arms and join them and, and walk down that road with them as they head towards um, a different season in life. Using the video to let those who survived the deadliest mass shooting in modern day U.S. history know when they are ready, they are waiting with open arms. You are a survivor and you are not alone. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The group was started by survivors of Columbine in the days following the Aurora Movie Theater shooting. Survivors have been able to use social media to connect with others around the world. When suspicious devices are found in the mail, specialized safety teams are brought in to disassemble the device. They then send it to the National Forensic Labs of the Postal Inspection Services. And that's where inspectors do the painstaking work of searching for any clues left behind. Sam Dick has more. You are looking at a reconstructed suspicious device containing nails found near a collection box in Arizona. When you have an explosive device, you don't want to move it at all. You want to make sure that it, it's kept safe and then rendered safe, which means basically disassembled. Once it's rendered safe, the evidence comes here to the Postal Inspection Services Forensics Lab in Washington, D.C. Their mission? To find evidence that will assist investigators to track down a suspect or build a case. It handles um, what's known as trace evidence. Uh, and that may be any small or minute particle that transfers between an item from one object to another. Vincent Desiderio is a forensic chemist who works in the physical evidence lab. Since the suspicious package was disassembled for safety, the lab then reconstructs it to examine what is left behind. For example, they couldn't find any full fingerprints, but they did find a partial inside a box flap. They were able to develop a partial DNA profile of, of the suspect inside the box. DNA is very sensitive uh, right now, so you don't need that much in order to get uh, a partial profile. Piece by piece, the work done in the lab assists in shrinking a list of suspects on that profile. I found some green paint inside the box that was associated with some of the components that the, the house of the suspect had green decking all around the house. Then, once investigators were able to search the home, they found evidence linked to the return address. It had been photocopied and then handwritten over. 
This discovery of the evidence made the case. In the suspect's residence, he had um, some photocopies and an, an, actually an original mailing that had handwriting with the same um, return address. The suspect in this case was convicted of mailing a dangerous device and got a seven-year prison sentence. There is no typical case. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I love about this job is that every case is different. And that was our Sam Dick reporting. Federal law prohibits the U.S. Postal Service from simply opening mail without probable cause, but often tips from law enforcement or the general public will lead them to illegal items. Kentucky's race for U.S. Senate could be a close one. Bill Bryan has the latest in today's bottom line. Good afternoon. Democratic U.S. Senate candidate Lexington Mayor Jim Gray released what he calls an internal poll today showing him tied with Republican Senator Rand Paul. Gray's campaign claims the race is tied at 42 percent each for the two candidates. Gray's camp released few details about the poll and used it as a pitch for donations. Paul says he will submit his Senate record to voters in November, but he's holding a high-dollar fundraiser in Louisville Friday night featuring former presidential candidate Carly Fiorina. Speaking of former presidential candidates, Florida Senator Marco Rubio has reversed course and will seek another term in Washington. It comes after Rubio said repeatedly during his campaign for the White House he would not run for re-election to his Senate seat. Rubio has been under pressure, though, from Republicans to run again. In his announcement, he said he continues to have disagreements with Donald Trump. There will be a Republican primary in the Sunshine State, and the winner will take on one of two Democratic House members, Patrick Murphy or Alan Grayson. Another day of dueling news conferences in Frankfurt. Governor Matt Bevin and Attorney General Andy Bashir disagreeing on major public policy issues. This morning, the governor announced he is moving ahead with asking the federal government to allow him to overhaul former Governor Steve Bashir's Medicaid expansion. He would replace it with what he calls helping to engage and achieve long term health. The acronym for that is HEALTH. It would require those enrolled to pay monthly premiums. There would be no vision or dental coverage, but money for that could be earned through a rewards program. This afternoon, Attorney General Andy Bashir announced that he is taking legal action to challenge Bevin's dismantling of several boards, including the University of Louisville and the State Retirement Board. More on the actions he's taking later on WKYT. The gloves are coming off again between presidential candidates Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. The latest from the campaign trail on the CBS Evening News at 630. Bill Bryant, WKYT. All the waiting comes to an end tomorrow night. The NBA draft is almost here. Now, the bar was certainly set high for Scalabissier when he came to Kentucky. He is hopeful of reaching his full potential in the NBA. Lee K. Howard is in New York for the draft. Scalabissier arrived at Kentucky with sky high expectations, almost unfair expectations. And unlike some of the previous Wildcats, Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns, Scal had a hard time living up to those expectations. However, he has benefited from some of these pre draft workouts, and NBA teams believe that he has yet to reach his potential. Scal thinks he can flourish in the NBA. Well, I think I'll be able to flourish because there's definitely more spacing uh, on the floor. It's a physical game, but I'll, be, I'll get stronger. Uh, as uh, the year goes on and um, my versatility both on offense and defense. You know, I can shoot the basketball now from NBA range, uh, can put it on the floor um, and even can post up. So, and on defense, I, I mean, I run the floor really well, I can block shots. So. Scal seemed really confident this afternoon when we spoke to him. He did have an up and down year at Kentucky, but he seemed very confident that his game will translate well to the next level and he's expected to be a lottery pick on Thursday night. Here in Midtown Manhattan, waiting for the NBA draft, I'm Lee K. Howard, WKYT. Point guard Derek Rose is headed to the New York Knicks. It is a multiplayer deal sending center Robin Lopez and guards Jose Calderon and Jerry and Grant to Chicago. The Knicks have been looking for a point guard, and Rose was one of the best in the NBA before injury slowed his career. He did play in 66 games last season, his most in five years. 
Just a massive crowd turning out in Cleveland to celebrate the Cavs NBA championship. Hundreds of thousands of fans lining the streets. LeBron James, the MVP of the finals, said during the parade that he would be coming back for another season to defend the title. Bars in the city were reportedly filled by 9 in the morning. Bus delays of more than three hours were common. Bridges, normally open to cars, were used as pedestrian gateways to the city. And Rory McIlroy says he will not play in the Rio Olympics because of concern over the Zika virus. In a statement, McIlroy said his health and his family's health comes before anything else. And while the risk of infection is low, it is a risk that he is not willing to take. Coming up at 6, Jamal Murray. Where would he like to land tomorrow night? Stay with us as we continue here on WKYT.